I'd like to share with you the number one absolute worst food that you could consume for your liver, especially if you're concerned about developing a fatty liver. And hint, it's not sugar, it's not carbs. And this particular ingredient is not even high fructose corn syrup, even though sugar, starch, and high fructose corn syrup is really bad for the liver, there's something much worse. Now, the big problem with the liver is that there's very few symptoms that occur with the liver. I had a liver problem for probably, I don't know, 22 years. I didn't know it was a liver problem. Now, I did have some symptoms, but I didn't connect the dots. A lot of my symptoms were my right shoulder, right through this trap right here, and right back into on the back of the scapula, and then also right underneath my right rib cage, like right here. It was just always just completely, you know, painful, sore, tight, and bloated for years. I didn't know what that was. Of course, this problem down here was my bile duct, the, like little tubes that connect to the gallbladder, but that's part of the liver because the liver makes bile. So I had this problem for a very long time, and that's why I'm, I do a lot of videos on the liver because I completely reversed it. And that's one big myth that I want to talk about because people think that once you have a liver problem, you always have a liver problem. Absolutely not. The liver is so robust and so rugged. It's the, one of the only organs that can completely 100% regenerate. So that's one myth. Another myth is that um, the liver is filled with toxins. It's very toxic. That's not true. The liver detoxifies poisons. It doesn't store poisons. The fat cells store poisons. The liver gets rid of the toxins. Once the liver gets to the point where it starts developing scar tissue and getting into cirrhosis, the risk of getting liver cancer goes way up. The treatment that the medical profession has is not very good. It's just like, you know, liver transplant, get on the list. And there's not a lot of people that have healthy livers to give you. You're playing this waiting game. Hopefully you'll be able to survive to the point where you can get a liver. Then if you get a liver, you have to take anti-rejection uh, medication like prednisone. And now you got to deal with those side effects. The simple solution is you want to prevent a liver problem. Now, there was a very interesting study on rats that I want to tell you. And there's three groups of rats. And in the first group, they fed lard and alcohol to these rats. Okay, lard is pig fat. Second group, they fed beef fat, it's called tallow, and alcohol to these rats. And then in the third group, they fed them corn oil and alcohol. Now, what's interesting is the first group, the lard and the alcohol, had minimal damage to the livers. And then this test, they were testing for like liver damage and then the development into a fatty liver because there was alcohol involved. I kind of wish they would have added one more group with this test, like a group of mice that only consumed alcohol just to see what would happen. But anyway, the first group that had pig fat, lard, and alcohol, they had minimal damage to the liver. The next group with the tallow, beef fat, and alcohol, they had virtually no damage to the liver. What does that mean? That means that beef fat could potentially be protective to the liver. What's one idea? That's interesting. It's actually fascinating especially since I consume a lot of beef fat in my diet and I don't seem to have a lot of liver problems anymore. But then the third group of rats that were fed corn oil and alcohol, guess what happened to them? Not good. Severe liver damage is the most damage of all three groups. The worst food or ingredient, we'll call it, for a fatty liver or a liver in general is seed oils. Seed oils are very inflammatory. They're very damaging, especially the way that they're processed. Right here, you can see this right here. Now, what's interesting about this seed oil right here, you see these pictures of the vegetable oils because that's what it's called, the vegetable oil. To me, that's like false advertising because you're having vegetables on there thinking that that oil is coming from vegetables when it's not. This is like soy oil. I mean, I think just a matter of time before these guys get in trouble with advertising because it's not vegetable oil. But the specific type of fat that's omega-6 that we're getting way too much, like an average person in the U.S. gets between 25 to 30% of their calories. It's called linoleic acid. And so lard, pig fat, has about 2.5% of it linoleic acid. Talo, beef fat, only has 0.7% linoleic acid. That's like less than 1%. But corn oil has like 56.6% linoleic acid. So it's this heated linoleic acid in the seed oils that are oxidized or damaged to the point where it can create a lot of free radical damage and like a rusting out effect on your cells, and especially in the liver and the nervous system. And then from that, you get a lot of byproducts. I mean, I've done several videos on this topic. If you haven't seen those, you can check them out. But you want to get these oils out of your diet big time. 
Our diet is composed of way too much of it, 25 to 30% of it. Uh, it's highly inflammatory. It also gets lodged and stuck in our cells, in our fat cells, in the membranes around our nervous system for two to three years. Yeah. So when you eat sugar, for example, you'll burn it off pretty fast. But when you consume something like this, it gets lodged in the body, it gets stuck in there. We can't even use it as energy. So what are we using it as? Well, cell membranes, hormones. I mean, it's going right into our tissues and creating all sorts of inflammation, and especially inflammation in the liver, which then leads to insulin resistance. And you should just start reading the ingredients on things. And when you go to restaurants, right, just ask, what type of oil are you frying my food in? I would avoid anything fried at any fast food restaurant or any restaurant. I would not consume them because you're just getting more of the soy oil, the corn oil, maybe canola or cottonseed oil. You want to avoid that for at least, you know, two to three years to get it out of the system. Create a demonstration on yourself how good you could feel if you actually were to replace that crappy uh, oil with something healthier. You want to start replacing with omega-3 fatty acids. That would be like the fish oils, the cod liver oil, things like that. That oil is anti-inflammatory. They're not only using this severely damaged oxidative oil, but they're reheating it over and over and over up to 100 or more times. I mean, can you imagine the amount of byproducts that are given off and the amount of oxidative stress that's creating for your cells? So number one, remove the seed oils from the diet. Start reading ingredients. Number two, start adding in more omega-3 fatty acids. Number three, start decreasing the amount of animal foods like chicken, turkey, you know, even beef that are grain fed and even eggs are fed grains unless you can find a, an egg that is higher in omega-3 fatty acids. The point is that you want to start cutting down these seed oils and high omega-6 fats from your diet and replace this with grass-fed, grass-finished beef, grass-fed lamb, grass-fed goat, grass-fed buffalo, things like that. And I also don't think it would hurt if you also added crucifix.